here we go, the Tower of Power. Well, good morning and welcome to the workshop. I'm afraid it's been a long time since I've been in here and a longer time still since I've uploaded a video. I did take a little bit of footage of the continuation of building the traction engine steam toy and a little bit around the modification of the vice that I've put together. Unfortunately, I haven't taken them to completion yet, but I figured it'd be nice to get a video out there and show that I haven't passed away into the nether realm. In fact, I think probably the next time we have a video will be when baby is here with us, and uh, so it might be an even larger interval, but rest assured I'm doing well, family's doing well, uh, and I'm still enjoying my time here doing some modeling and modular engineering. So I'll speak to you soon. The cylinder mounting pad requires a piece of brass that's 1 8 inch thick and 5 8 inch wide uh, and about an inch and a half long. Uh, and I don't have any, but I do have this angle, so I've cut the bit off and now I'm going to cut down. need to get that in the uh, milling machine and get the top surface nice and flat. Another thing I like doing is using these Jenny leg calipers. They're actually really easy to use. You just put the, uh, the tip against the edge of the ruler and then you adjust it so the needle hits the right division and if you get an engraved one like this you can see it locks kind of locks into place so this is five sixteenths there we go <clears throat> this is probably going to get you kicked out of the uh, youtube machinist school um, but unfortunately the wiggler center finder i've got is way too long. Even with the quill fully retracted, the spacer behind here, the table in its lowest position, um, the combination of this drill chuck height and the the length of this wiggler, um, it just means it's just not possible at all to get the center in there. So what I've done is I've got a uh, spot drill here reversed in the jaws of the Jacobs chuck. And uh, coming down, I centered it visually and then I used a combination of the um, calipers and a depth gauge um, against the edge of the work here. Okay, I just spent ages screwing up this bloody thing. Bloody spot drill is not held in the chuck properly. So I have to redo that entire thing. Right, we are in the zeroth hole here on the rotary table. So time to get drilling. Well, you may see a little double hole here, and that's because I can't count to four. And here is the ultimate party trick of this particular setup. Seamless quick cut. Uh, I put this back on the dividing head and cut these three holes slightly larger because we have three tapped holes and three clearance holes. This piece of brass is now ready to become cylinder covers. I'm going to do the front cylinder cover first. As drawn, it doesn't have any registration with the cylinder bore. It just has the uh, faux gland nut on the outside. And since that outside gland nut is uh, pretty much um, non-functional and it's just aesthetic, I'm going to cut that using the parting tool. And I'm going to use this exposed surface here to create a little registration uh, spigot to put into the bore of the cylinder. So let's see how that goes. Okay. That's a pretty, pretty bloody good fit. forgot to ream it out. Did you remember? Of course, one problem with brass is your machining it. All of the swarf goes bloody everywhere. I'm covered in it and my little toolbox down here is basically full of it. Oh 
I'm trying to create a little decorative boss over here. And uh, of course the problem I've got is that there's no clearance uh, in this really tight radius to get a tool in there. Except for my really jaggedy, scabby, old, boring tool. Who'd have thought? Okay, despite my amazing planning abilities for drilling these holes, I neglected to leave quite enough space to part this off in one go. So what I'm going to do now is plunge the parting tool into the required depth to create that shoulder, which is going to sit in the bore of the cylinder. Um, and that will make the inside face of the cylinder cover and the, the outside face of the spigot which are the two registration surfaces, then I can pull this out of the chuck and part it off because that final surface there that's being parted off doesn't register against anything. Okay, well, here's our cylinder. This is the uh, the, the front cover engaged, and the uh, back cover just slots on like so. It's looking a little bit like a steam cylinder, isn't it? I have the vise off of the mill table because I was obviously trying to sort out using the dividing head to drill the cylinder uh, fixing holes. Um, and while it's out, I thought it'd be a great idea to cut this end off. I've now got a cold chisel and having seen uh, Matt Chivers do it on his channel, I thought here's a great opportunity to get this done.